Hello everybody, Math Elbow here, and today we are going to be talking about multiplicative functions. So let me write that down. So what is a multiplicative function? Well, a multiplicative function is defined as some f such that f of m and m times n, where m and n are two distinct, uh, well, perhaps not distinct, just uh, uh, where m and n are two different uh, numbers. So f of m n is equal to f of m times f of n. And this, uh, well, this is seems like a good definition, but there's more to it. The, the, the other caveat is that this uh, holds for, for multiplicity, multiplicativity only when uh, GCD of m and n is equal to 1. So this uh, necessitates that m and n be relatively prime for this condition to hold. Well, let's, let's ask ourselves, what happens when that condition is not necessarily met? Well, uh, then we have complete multiplicativity. So complete multiplicative. And completely multiplicative function uh, a function that is completely mu multiplicative, let's call it g of mn is simply equal to g of m times g of n for all m and n. And that is the condition which is not met in uh, multiplicativity. So for, for all m comma n. And so we can see uh, right away that uh, that uh, simple multiplicativity is a much harsher restriction than complete multiplicativity, which said, actually, no, 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 excuse me. Uh, complete multiplicativity is, is much more open, whereas um, simple multiplicativity is much more restricted as because it, it necessitates that M and N are both relatively prime. And if you're confused as to why I am calling them relatively prime, it's uh, because of this. It's because GCD of mn equals 1. Well, what does that mean? That means that the greatest common denominator, the, the, the one factor that, the, the greatest factor that both m and n share uh, in common is 1. It's, it's, it's nothing else. So, so for example, 6 and 5, they're relatively prime because they don't share any, any factors in common other than 1. So when you don't share any factors in common other than 1, you are relatively prime. So this statement is equivalent to relatively prime or sometimes called co-prime. So that is the definition of multiplicative and completely multiplicative functions. So now let's discuss, well, what are some examples of some multiplicative or, or completely multiplicative functions? So let's, let's ask ourselves, let's discuss the function boldface1 which I discussed previously in, in, in my previous videos as my favorite function. And it still is because it's so simple. It's wonderful. One of n is equal to one for all n. What a wonderful function. So let's ask ourselves, is this multiplicative? And when we're asking that, it's equivalent to asking, is one of mn equal to one of m times one of n? N. That was a very bad question mark. Let me rewrite that question mark. Much better. So, uh, well, let's ask yourself, is this condition satisfied? Is this condition met? And yes, it most certainly is. And let's ask ourselves why. Well, 1 of mn is simply equal to 1 because mn is a normal number. Uh, well, it, it, it's a number. And... Uh, it is equal to 1, and 1 of n is equal to 1, and 1 of n is equal to 1. So 1 is equal to 1 times 1. Is this condition met? Most certainly it is. So we can conclude that 
uh, one of n, the, the function boldface one, is most definitely multiplicative. Uh, but the, the question is, or is it completely multiplicative? Well, yes, of course, because, because uh, m and n, uh, if they're not co-prime, if, if they're, for example, if, if m equals n, this still holds. This, this holds for any m and n. So it is both uh, multiplicative and completely multiplicative. And now let's ask ourselves, well, what about, what about the function d of n? Is this multiplicative? Well, um, uh, I will prove to you in a few minutes that it most definitely is, but there is a more general way to prove to you uh, that, that, that there's, a, there's a way to prove to you that a more general class of functions has uh, multiplicative pro have multiplicative properties um, whereas I could just uh, prove d of n is multiplicative and each other function in the class is multiplicative. So l let me show you right now. The questions we will be asking are such. Is d of n multiplicative? Is, um, is sigma of n multiplicative? And is sigma k of n multiplicative? And well, if you are very, very smart and if you are a bright young boy unlike myself, then you will then you will definitely notice that all of that both of these functions fall under sigma sub k because if you realize it d of n is simply equal to sigma sub 0 of n and sigma n is simply equal to sigma sub 1 of n and 0 and 1 are definitely valid k's So we can most definitely just check that uh, sigma k of n is multiplicative, and that will imply that both of these two are multiplicative. So that is why you would not want to prove each of these separately, that you would just want to prove the, prove the last case and say that it applies for both of the previous cases. So let's prove now that sigma sub k is multiplicative. So let's begin. What we would like to show is that sigma sub k of mn is equal to sigma sub k of m and times sigma sub k of n. And you, you get the idea. So we will basically start with this. We will start with sigma sub k of mn and we will work through steps and simplify or expand, and we will come to a point where we have sigma sub k of n times sigma sub k of n, and we'll say, well, this is equal to that, and therefore they are multiplicative. So let's begin. Uh, sigma sub k of mn, what does this mean? Well, let's, let's simplify things. Let's say mn is equal to f, and f, f is just another number, it's not a function. So then we can say sigma sub k, of f is equal to the sum of all d divides f of d to the power of k. Wonderful. So what this is saying is I'll take all numbers that divide my number f and I'll plug them into this sum here. And I'll say, okay, I want to take each divisor of f and I want to exponentiate it to some k and add them up. And that is what is going to be sigma sub k of f. So now what is sigma sub k of m times n? Well, we can break this up. We can say this uh, sigma sub k of mn is equal to the sum over uh, over d divides f of uh, d to the k, right? And well, we can split this up since we, we said let f equal n times n, we can say, okay, now I'm gonna take the sum over both um, a divides m and b divides n of, uh, of, of uh, a to the power of k, times b to the power of k. And this will essentially equal what uh, this is. And well, what is what is this expression? Well, we can simplify this. In instead of having this weird uh, something comma something sigma notation, we can just split it up into a double sum. 
which is perhaps for you none the none the more simple, but it, it is uh, a necessary step in this procedure. So we have the double sum over a divides n, b divides n of uh, a to the k, or or let's let's just write this as a well no, yeah a to the k b to the k, and then we can simplify this into sigma a divides m a to the k times sigma b divides m uh, b to the k and notice that when we make the step we necessitate that a and b are relatively pr or, or that m and n are relatively prime so here we necessitate that gcd mn is equal to one and now we're basically throwing out the notion that these uh, that this this function could be completely multiplicative and we are uh, pushing the notion that it should be uh, simply multiplicative so then we have this oh my god then we have this so what is this equal to well this is very simple because if you recall our definition of sigma sub k it was that you have some d divides m of d to the k. So this is simply equal to sigma sub k of m times this is equal to sigma sub k of n. Wonderful. So now we have proved that sigma sub k of mn is equal to sigma sub k of m times sigma sub k of n. And therefore, sigma sub k is uh, simply multiplicative, and ergo the d of n function, the divisor function, which counts the divisors of a certain number n, is also multiplicative, and ergo the sum of divisors function, which is sigma n, is also multiplicative. So wonderful, we've uh, defined what multiplicity, multiplicativity is, what completely multiplicative uh, is, and some examples of multiplicative and completely multiplicative functions are. Wonderful. Thank you very much.